first job that we're going to do today is uh, we'll have to finish the return line for the, for the heater. I've done half of the, the hose already and uh, I'll show you in a minute. Just let me take it off. Ah. So if you are familiar with the heater lines in the E36s, you know that when it's a six cylinder, the return line get, gets out of, of under the manifold and goes to the expansion tank of the radiator, right here. It goes from here, right here, takes a bend, takes a bend and goes under the manifold. Uh, our problem is that we can't make a hose go under the manifold because we, we don't have any space there. We have to take it through all the... Return hose should look like something like that. Uh, it, it, it exits the heater core, uh, goes through through the side of it. You normally attach it to some places or here. You can use zip ties or what, whatever you want. You can uh, weld it on if you want to. Uh, and it has to take a bend uh, in here. It has to exit in here. So it's the it's the exit for for the coolant to the ex expansion tank, and it goes to the radiator. I'm making it a little bit different because I'm also installing a gas gas injection because it, because it's economy. My personal hose will have to have two exits because it, it will have. A additional route, a additional circulation circle for the reductor, which will look something like it should be shorter, which should look something like that, uh, and go like that to the reductor. It will be something like that. Inlet and an outlet will be here, and the it will be here. Yeah, the entrance of it from the engine will be from this valve because it controls your heat airflow it means that it controls your heat inside it because because it's controlled by the flow of the, the the coolant the coolant enters from the bottom of it and my decision was to make it the forward circulation from under that so i put a crossing on it for the outlet because it means when the valve is closed the whole system is still flowing because of the water pump, so it means even though it's blocked up here, the flow will still go through that, so it won't be a problem for, the, for that to be heated, and it will look something like that. I'll still cut the hoses, but I'm just putting it on now, and fuck, oh, it's below. You have to put the hoses with spaces between the, the steering rack so it won't touch it when the, you turn the steering line, the, the steering wheel because if you put them if, and they will contact with each other you can damage the hose and in the future it will start leaking at that, at that place so of course this build is not that uh, reliable but if you zip tie the shit out of it it should hold and it shouldn't leak, it shouldn't vibrate it should be R reliable enough. It's really hard to find this type of, ho of hose because it requires specific bends and entrances and, and exits and probably the easiest way is to make it yourself so let me install it and I'll show you the whole system. So the hoses are installed. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you to do that. Uh, I'd recommend you to research it a bit more and find out your way, but I found it the easiest way. It's not uh, touching anything, it won't rub, it won't, it won't peel off and uh, it shouldn't leak. So if you want to see it, you have to look it down there, you see, the outcome is there. You see the bend, it goes right through there, it goes into the reductor, it goes back to the hose, to the expansion tank, it goes right through there. It's a bit too long, I'll shorten it later. And the same goes from the, for the exit. It goes through there, under the, behind the support. Behind the support, behind this, this, this black shit, this, this black, <laughs> behind this black thing, uh, it takes a bend down below and it goes through the side of it. You should, able, you should be able to see it. 
and also goes to the expansion tile. And that's about it. Of course, you have to finish it, you have to refurbish it, shorten it, tighten it, uh, and that would be about it, about this part. Um, the following will be the power steering pump. Uh, the power steering system is a bit complicated here because uh, all the M50, M52 and M52 engines, uh, the tank for the power steering fluid mounts uh, mounts there on the support bracket. But as we see, we have no space here because, because of the uh, exit of the water flow. So we have to leave it in, in the original place, which is here. But fortunately for us, it has the lines for the steering bump and for the steering bracket. So you should leave it as it is. But one thing, as you see, the original E36 line goes up to there. But we need to lengthen it. Okay, we attach it to the, to the old hose. But the problem is that it's too short, you see? I had tightened, tightened it before, but it didn't do that enough. So what you have to do is you have to grind it that ring a bit so you would be able to get that hose all the way up and it will stay and it won't, won't leak for sure and it should stay strong enough to keep 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 it reliable I think so we're going to do that now let me just take it off and we'll do that in a minute So we grinded it off and you see we still left a little ring on it so that uh, when the hose will attach it will still would have something to hold on to because if we just if we were to, to grind it off completely it would it wouldn't be as stable as it could be now so I'd recommend you to do that grind it and still leave a little ring on it it will make it stronger so we'll leave, we'll leave that for installation now we should remove the power steering pump we should reassemble everything and uh, then we'll finish that hose in the installation. I just can't remember if it's on three bolts or on two. Of course it won't go off that easy though. Why am I bothering with this? Finally, yeah, if you notice whether there's a leak on your pump or not, uh, I took it, I just took it off. And if you see, there's a lot of black stuff on it all around the hose contact area. This one's clean, it was cleaned by me before, but it wasn't that dirty, such as this. That means that the last hose that was put on here was leaking. Don't know why it was that what, why it was that way, but because probably because because it wasn't tightened enough. So hopefully this time it won't be that problem. The main reason I'm changing those is because I bought the whole the whole power steering system by mistake. All you need for this for this swap is this hose, uh, and I bought the whole steering pump by mistake because I didn't know that. Uh, I thought that there wasn't any other solution because. In the parts group, those these uh, the codes for these two power steering pumps are different. So that means they, they must be different. That's the way I thought. I don't know what part of it is different, but uh, I didn't want to risk it. I just bought the whole the whole package, and uh, this one's old. This means that this one is from the seven series. And how the steering bolts on is it goes in in a different way. It it puts in uh, it goes in and you screw the hose. This one has a ring around it and has a has a bolt in it, but the bolt is size 19, and the other ones are size 17. And the M50 engine has a, a size 17 bolt in it, which means that the fuel that the the power steering pump is different in an M50 than from from the M52. But the M52 and M52UB are the same. Even the M54 power steering pumps are the same. So all you have to do is buy this hose with this entrance. It means that size 19 nut. Uh, I really need some music here. You'll put up some in the video though, yeah? Yeah. Uh, there's one thing that you all should know. 
the very important thing for these engines are tightening torques. You must have a manual for this, let me show you that. You have to download a BMW Bentley manual, which has all the information in it, as you can see. Everything from maintenance to wiring diagrams, to, in, to inside wiring diagrams. And there's tightening torque for every fucking bolt into car, so the reason I'm stressing it because is because I already uh, broke three three places where you have to screw in up. I, I there's three places where I where I have already stripped my nuts. <laughs> there's three places where I've stripped my bolts, so you have to be very careful because it's aluminium, and there's this really it's really easy to to make a mistake. So we've just finished our steel power steering pump reassembly. The problem was that the alternator ventilation hose was touching the power steering hose, so we had to trim it so it make some clearance and it wouldn't rub. Now it's about it's from half a centimeter to two centimeters clearance, so it will be fine. Uh, we assembled the hoses, used some zip ties so they wouldn't move around. Uh, it should hold on pretty firm. Uh, the steering pump was bolt, bolt, bolted on. The hose to the steering rack was also bolted on. Uh, I used the tightening gun, tightening torque wrench. Uh, it had, uh, if I'm correct, uh, about the 35 newtons, newton meters, and uh, I've just finished it. So that's how you do. Now the steering system is do is done. All's can all everything's connected, and that's it. Now we can move on to the auxiliary fan. All I'm going to do is bolt it on because the previous owner decided to just snap it off, just cut it off, just cut off the wires, all the. The system so so in the future I'll be looking for some fuses some connectors not fuses I'll try to bolt it on so we can move on to installing it if you want to install an auxiliary fan you have to buy this carrier which goes in between the strut tower strut towers I don't know how these are called comment and tell us how these things are called that there's metal sheets that go up to the body I'm if I'm not mistaken those are called strut towers but I'm not sure so you have to buy this 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 bracket support. Or this I don't know how is it called correctly. So you have to put it on like this, and you bolt it on with two bolts. Uh, I didn't have the original one, so I used what I found. Uh, the length is it's enough in length. I used washers on both sides, and even though it's, it's prone to vibrating, it shouldn't fall off that easy. So, and the wiring goes somewhere somewhere around here. So in the future I'll be looking for the connectors and the, the system, but I think I should be fine though. So, so we've installed the fan and we found out that there's still a support place missing. Uh, you see this pin, the, this hole, the pin goes inside it. I'm not sure whether it's a bolt or it's a pin, but it's probably from the AC radiator. So I won't be using that, uh, I won't be using AC in this motor because it's impossible due to engine management and uh, electric stuff, it's impossible to wire the IC. I'll probably just make some support brackets from here, from the radiator mounts that go from here, as you see, they go right here. I'll probably just bolt something on there and there and it will move quite, it will, it will be firm enough. But for now, it's, it's, it's enough for me. It's, it's holding on good. So that's it for today. We'll, probably, we'll be probably just pack up and put it there. So thank you for watching.